Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It is, uh, it's good to be in Wisconsin. This is kind of one of my first three videos back in the state of Wisconsin. Unfortunately, due to this whole COVID-19 thing, I was not able to take some trips to the south this spring, but we're in northern Wisconsin. It is pre-spawn. Water temps are in the low 40s. Look at that. 42, 42.6. 42 and uh, today we're trying to find these pre-spawn crappie with water temps this cold. Uh, these crappie, what they're going to do is they're going to come from their wintering basins, which is in the deepest part of these natural lakes, uh, where they suspend over these soft bottoms. And they're going to set up, kind of like in the fall, they're going to set up on the edge of the hard bottom to soft bottom transition when the water's this cold. Once the water temps get to the upper 40s into the low 50s and they hold there consistently, that's when they're going to start pushing into the shallows to spawn. Um, but for right now, we're going to use the side imaging to try to locate that hard to soft bottom transition. On this lake, it's going to be about the 20 to 25 foot range, somewhere in there. Um, but that is where they're going to stack up. On this lake, there's a lot of crappie in this lake. They're not very big, but we're probably going to get into a school of a, like thousands of 10 inch fish, which are still fun to catch and they're great to eat. So let me show you on the side imaging what I'm looking at. And uh, once we find the school of fish, we're going to set up on them and hopefully put a few in the boat. All right, so for my, uh, my settings on this, a lot of you ask, hey, what's the settings you use on side imaging? All right, so my sensitivity, I usually have it either 10, 11, or 12, usually cranked up a little bit because I'm searching for some smaller fish. If you're going for walleye, bass, uh, pike, something that has a larger profile, you can probably turn this down uh, to 10, 9, 8, something like that. There's a fish on the bottom. There's something right there. Uh, as far as left to right it varies right now because these are going to be huge clouds of crappie uh, they're going to show up really well i got it on 75 feet left and right if i know it's going to be kind of a narrow search pattern i'm going to crank this all the way down to about 45 feet left and right this is the edge i'm looking for see how it's a bright color right here this bright color is hard bottom this dark color is soft bottom and there is the giant school of crappie right there. That's why I'm searching out so wide. That is a massive school. All these are all these are probably 9, 10, 11 inch fish. That is a giant school of crappie. Didn't really take that long to find them. Um, but uh, I, I do want to keep going through the settings here. That is an absolutely giant school of fish. Now we're going right underneath them. That is a giant school of crappie. Looks like there's some bigger ones on this side here. That is what those crappie look like. Unbelievable. These are all crappie in the soft bottom area. They're still suspended out. I'm gonna bet that if I enhance my range here, that hard bottom area is pretty close by. I'm gonna guess it's on this side. That is an absolute giant school of crappie right through there. I mean, there are tens of thousands of crappie stacked through this. Those are all fish. Every single one of them are fish. My goodness, there's a bigger fish stacked up top. Unbelievable. Giant school. Giant school. Alright, see how this is the darker bottom? Now we're getting into the lighter bottom up here. If you can see that, hopefully. Yeah. See, it's starting to get a lighter bottom. That's that hard bottom. Here's the hard bottom, and there is the soft bottom. That is the transition area. I'm trying to get this thing so I can focus here. That's that transition area. And these, there's another school of crappie right there. My goodness. They're stacked up right on this edge. That is what we're looking for today. And that is, that's what we're going to be looking for pretty much until these water temps consistently hold into the upper 40s. Uh, we're going to be finding them in, on this lake anyway in that 20 to 25 foot range. Absolute massive school of crappie. Uh, suspended out in that deeper water. So we're gonna set up on them. Because it's such a big school, I got a live scope, but you don't need live scope. I would just throw a buoy marker down. Uh, if you 
were to, if you didn't have live scope or some sort of forward looking sonar, if you had a sonar on the bow of your boat, like a down imaging or even a side imaging, probably 2D would work too. Just a simple traditional uh, sonar setup, you would be able to see this big cloud of fish and stay on top of them. Um, but we're gonna get set up with a live scope and hopefully pull up uh, probably some 10 to 11 inch crappie for put them in the live well so we can have them for lunch for later. So uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty quick. I didn't think it was gonna take that quick. I honestly thought it was going to take a little bit longer. I was going to have to troll through this entire edge, but they're there. They are there. Oh my goodness. Yep, there they are, right there. There they are. Right on the edge, giant school off to my left. Now, for, the, for those of you who don't know, your boat is at the top. These are to the left of your boat. These are to the right of your boat. And everything at the top of the screen is directly or below your boat. Anything that goes past is now behind your boat. Okay, that's how side imaging works. Sorry for the glare. I do apologize for that. I will. Uh, I hope you can actually see a lot of this. But that is a massive cloud of crappie that we're going over the top of right now. All right, I'm gonna put it in reverse. We're gonna stack up on them and uh, we'll get to fishing. Okay. So there is the school of fish tied to the bottom at about 25 feet. And to start off, because I know a lot of these fish are going to be kind of on the smaller side, I'm just going to use a quarter ounce jig. It's probably a lot bigger than what a lot of people use in the northern states for crappie, um, but it's going to weed out those smaller fish, hopefully. And because these fish are actually so close to the, the bottom right now, I'm going to guess they're feeding on insect larvae. Um, so creature baits are gonna be probably key. This is the Crappie Monster Uppercut Black and Chartreuse. Black and Chartreuse pretty much works well on a lot of lakes up north. So that's what I'm gonna start with. Got the uh, eight foot ACC Crappie Sticks wind grip, and then I'm using eight pound monofilament with the PC Phone ICX-5. A lot of people like asking, a lot of people ask about my setup, so there it is. There are just, oh my goodness, so many fish. We're gonna drop straight down on them. So you can pull up a decent one here. So there's a couple decent ones down there. They're just packed so tight. There's one. Hopefully he's a decent guy. No, these are small fish. Well, so much for having the big jig weeding out the, the little guys. That's about a six inch fish, if that. We're going to see if we can pull up a couple decent ones. Otherwise, we're going to try to find a different school of crappie. Looks like there's a couple other boats that had the same idea. They're sitting right on this brake line. There's just all these clouds of crappie right along, excuse me, right along this brake line of that hard to saw bottom transition, like 20, 25 feet. So it's pretty easy to find them. I'm not the only one with the idea. If I wanted to catch them consistently, I'd probably drop down to a 16th ounce jig, but I do want to weed out those smaller, smaller fish. There's one. I don't think these are going to be big guys. Nope. Nope. These are small guys. These are little itty bitty bait fish. That's what these are. All right. Well, unfortunately, uh, I could not pull any big crappie out of there, but that is how you find them. I'm actually going to go try to find one more uh, school of fish here um, to end this video and hopefully pull some 10 or 11 inch crappie out of it. This lake is not known for big crappie, um, but if we can get some 10, 11 inch crappie, I'll be happy. They're super aggressive, which kind of leads me to believe they're smaller fish. Those bigger fish, when I say smaller or bigger, I'm talking like seven or eight inch fish versus that 10 or 11 inch fish. I'm not talking a two pounder. There's one. Uh, nope, they are still the same miniature crappie. Baby, baby crappie. So one question I always get asked about side imaging is my side imaging broken? If I start seeing really straight lines, you see all these straight lines? These are all fish. Now, when my, I'm, I'm slowly moving, I'm slowly drifting here, but when my transducer sends a signal out and it hits that fish, 
it pings it back and tells the display unit to put a pixel here. But when you're not moving very fast, those pixels get elongated, which is why they look like lines on the screen here. There we go. That's probably a better picture for you. They look like lines on the screen. Now, all of these are, are the same fish. Now, once I start moving, they're going to start looking like little dashes or dots. So the one thing that I always get asked about side imaging or even down imaging 2D sonar, is it broken if I start seeing straight lines? No, it's not. <laughs> it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now, as you can see here, I hope I'm getting in a little too shallow. Here we go. All right. Now you can see these are these are shorter shorter dashes, little dots because I'm moving I'm going three miles an hour. That's what they look like when you're going fast. but when you're going slow, they're really elongated almost straight lines. All right, well unfortunately that is uh, that's all we're gonna get. I caught a few off camera, but they're all probably like seven eight inches. So I'm gonna actually spend the rest of the day trying to find them. But hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you can have put this uh, information to good use. It's early April right now, but if you're in the southern states, you're probably in that spawn, post-spawn mode. Uh, up north, water temps are in the low 40s, so we're definitely pre-spawn. But next year, if you're in the southern states, late February, early March, you can use this information, whether it's on your natural lakes or your deep reservoirs. These crappie are gonna stack up on that hard to soft bottom transition. Use your side imaging and uh, you'll put some fish in the boat, hopefully bigger ones than I did. Appreciate you watching. You got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below. Yeah. Otherwise, you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. All right. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you.